Now I'm going to prove one of my favorite theorems on the derivative. The theorem is as follows. Theorem. Let f from a b to r closed interval be differentiable, including the endpoints, of course. Differentiable. Assume, assume that f prime of a less than alpha less than f prime of b. Then for some c in the closed interval a b, we have f prime of c equal to alpha. In other words, intermediate value property holds for derivatives. Okay, before the proof, let me state a corollary. Corollary f prime of x from a b to r cannot have a jump discontinuity, cannot have a jump discontinuity. Now let's prove the theorem. The proof of the corollary is so obvious that I'm not even going to justify giving a proof. So let's consider this for a moment. We want to show that all intermediate values are taken. So what I do is I simplify the situation. Consider, consider, oh, it's all red. Consider, consider g of x equal to f of x minus alpha x. Okay. Now g prime exists and we clearly see that g prime of a is less than 0 and g prime of b is greater than 0. This just follows because the derivative of alpha x is just alpha. So enough to show, enough to show, enough to show that, that g prime of some c is 0 for some, for some c in a, b. Okay. Let's look at what g prime a is less than 0 trying to say. Well, since g prime a is less than 0, that means limit h going to 0, g of a plus h minus g of a divided by h is less than 0. And note, because a is the left endpoint interval, h is greater than 0 here. Okay. In other words, for h close to 0 and greater than 0, we get g of a plus h is less than g of a. Okay. In other words, g is decreasing, decreasing, I'll put this in quotes, near a. So in a later module, once we prove uh, the mean value theorem, we will show that this uh, g is decreasing and the sign of the derivative being less than 0 are intimately related to each other. Similarly, similarly, g prime of b is greater than 0. So that means limit h going to 0 of g of b plus h minus g of b by h is greater than 0, right? But here h has to be negative. h is negative simply because we are at the right end point, okay? So this, just, this will just show that g of b minus g of b plus h is greater than 0 or in other words, g of b is greater than g of b plus h is greater than g of b plus h okay so net conclusion is net conclusion is that is that g g must attain 
must attain its minimum in AB. G certainly attains its maximum and minimum in the closed interval AB. It must attain its minimum in the open interval AB. Why is that? Well, because G, we have found that near, near the point um, A, there is a point A plus H such that G of A plus H is less than G of A and near the point B, we have found a point such that G of B is greater than G of B plus H. So both put together says that neither G of A nor G of B can be the minimum of the function G. So G must attain its minimum in the in AB. So let C B in AB be the point of minimum, be the point of minimum, minimum. Okay. Now, in the next module, we will show, we will show g prime of c has got to be 0. g prime of c has got to be 0. Okay. That we will see in the next module. So, this will conclude the proof. This concludes the proof. Concludes the proof. This is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on Darboux's theorem.